So here's what's happening tonight. I'm going to take this telescope right here and point it towards a region in the night sky. And this region in the night sky is right over there. The purpose of this hobby is highly controversial. Some want it to be art, some want it to be science. Others want to be alone and many want to share it. Some think it's hard, some think it's easy. In the end, everyone chooses for themselves. Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. Cold nights, snowy nights, new gear, entirely new target. And it's no coincidence that these last three clear nights were the coldest in my three years of astronomy. But that did not stop me of capturing an image of the Rosette Nebula. With my experience, the first night with all these conditions can never go as planned. In these last three years, I learned to keep my expectations low, in order not to get frustrated because new gear will almost never work the first night. Thankfully it did, and now I want to introduce you to everything new I used to take this image. Right here you can see the main part of the entire setup. You may be familiar with the telescope and the guide scope, and maybe the camera on the back there, but everything else is completely new. You may see a little bit of red in the setup, and yes, I'm a small fan of ZWO. So let's go over all of this new stuff. And just a side note, this is what we in Germany refer to as cable salad. Just as I said earlier, you may remember the TechnoSky APO, I plan to do a particular video on that in the future, just to <laughs> introduce it fully, because I don't think I, I, I did that yet. We have the ASI Air Pro, the new gadget, and I'm quite happy with it. The good old Omegon guide scope, and in the back another new gadget, the ZWO ASI 120mm Mini. That's a pretty long name for such a small camera, but it is a mono guide camera. In the back my good old ASI 294, the ZWO color camera, and the last new gadget, the filter wheel. This is the ZWO mini filter wheel and it houses up to 5 filters 1.25 inches. The ASI Air Pro is a small Raspberry Pi computer and it's designed to suit all of your astrophotography needs. It has four USB ports and one serial cable for the mount, four different power outlets on the side and a DSLR input, one power input, it has an internal card where it can store all the data and it has internal Wi-Fi, you can control it via your phone or tablet, which comes in very handy if you want to stay inside. And just a small new thing in order to connect the do heaters with the power outputs on the ASIR, I bought this small little adapter cable after some recommendations on Twitter. Thank you very much. Now let's get this filter wheel off there. Alright, getting this off is always a bit tricky because it is so big and the rotator on the scope is not beneficial either in this case. And the guide cam isn't either. So let's get this out. Screw this off. The filter wheel of course comes with all the adapters you need and a USB 2.0 cable. And how do I do this? I have my tablet over here and just as the tablet is starting up, the two filters I have in there, unsurprisingly, up to long. One of these is the L Pro and the other is the L Extreme. I now have my tablet connected to the ASI Air over there with the Wi-Fi network. And I can control everything in the telescope with this small computer, which is great. And just by clicking in here, I can switch the filters quite easily. Right now this is the L Extreme filter, the narrowband, the multi-narrowband filter, and the L Pro. 
As these imaging nights were about minus 10 degrees, I was not able to stay out any longer than necessary. The setup with the Ace AR worked, with some hiccups, but overall a very enjoyable first experience. But because of the cold, I was not able to shoot that much video outside. Only a small clip of some cool looking stars. There's the beautiful Orion constellation. If we look a bit more south and down, we can see the brightest star in, the hemisphere, in both hemispheres, actually, Sirius. Twinkling in an amazing color tone. That's awesome to see. If we look more towards the telescope, you can see the Big Dipper rising up over there. Looking directly above us, hang on. You can see Auriga. And I think there's a Starlink satellite going by. Well, there was a Starlink satellite going by. Well, there, there still is, but I can't see it with my eyes. This camera is better. Let's go back to Orion. And if you look a bit more to the west, we can see Taurus and the Pleiades. And that bright thing there to the right is Mars. And as soon as it's completely dark, I will take this amazing thing right here and point it not towards Orion. Many people think that the Rosette Nebula is in the constellation Orion, but it's actually in the constellation Monoceros. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Right about there in the center of the screen right now, there's our target for the night. It's freezing, it's minus 10 out here, I think. And I need to get inside very soon. It does not matter how long the clouds have been there. If you don't take the chance of a clear night, you miss out on so many things. This universe holds infinite possibilities and it's impossible to run out of reasons to photograph it. If you don't take this clear night, you will regret it the next day. If you don't take this clear night, you miss out on a moment only meant for yourself. If you don't take this clear night, the next ones will feel even further away. And if you don't take this clear night, you miss out on an experience that could change your life. That's why you take it.